Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Strat Baseball History. My name is Joe, and we are here to visit our 1962 Cards and Dice replay. Another game on April 13th, 1962, the 31st game of our season. Between the uh, Hank Aaron led Milwaukee Braves, who come into the game at 2 and 1, and the Los Angeles Dodgers, who are also 2 and 1, interestingly, because of the way Strat breaks out. While it's the fourth game of the season for the Dodgers, the way I do number one, two, three, four, and five starters is by number of games started. So Sandy Koufax making his first appearance of the season for Los Angeles today to take on Aaron's Braves. <clears throat> Koufax in 62 was 14 and 7 and 26 starts, a 2.54 ERA, 134 hits allowed in 184 innings. 100 and, excuse me, 57 walks, and 216 strikeouts, only 13 long balls allowed. Koufax will be facing a Milwaukee Braves lineup of shortstop Roy McMillan, catcher Del Crandall, third baseman Eddie Matthews, center fielder Hank Aaron, first baseman Joe Adcock, second baseman Tommy Aaron, left fielder Gus Bell, right fielder Lee May, and the pitcher for Milwaukee, Lou Burdett. <clears throat> Behind Koufax, defensively, the catcher today, Dolph Camilli, first baseman Ron Fairley, second base Maury Wills, third base Jim Gilliam, and the shortstop, uh, excuse me, second base uh, Burright, shortstop Wills. In left field, Tommy Davis, in center field, Willie Davis, and in right field, Frank Howard. So Koufax ready to go, both teams 2-1 and one in the early going, and he'll face Roy McMillan to lead things off. How about a 5-10, that's a ground ball, third base X. The third baseman for the Dodgers is Gilliam, he is a 3, and a 20 is an out number 1, that's a 5-3 for McMillan. Gilliam over to Fairley for the first out. <clears throat> so one down and Koufax faces Good hitting catcher Del Crandall. How about a 4 7 single 1 to 6 or line out to first? That's a single for Crandall. So Del finds himself at first base. No stealing. He's a D. That brings up the slugger, third baseman Eddie Matthews, with one down. Koufax with the pitch is a 6 5, and he strikes out Matthews for the second out of the inning. That brings up all time uh, center fielder Hank Aaron. Aaron actually a better right fielder than center fielder, but he's carded primarily in center here. <clears throat> Koufax ready, Crandall out first, Aaron in the box, and it's a 3-4. Brown ball shortstop, A++. We were not holding Crandall, so that is a 6-3 to three to end the inning. And Milwaukee does not score in the first. We go to the bottom half, and Milwaukee sends Lou Burdett to the mound. 10 and 9 and 19 starts. He gets his decisions, that's for sure. A 4.89 ERA, 172 hits in 144 innings, 23 walks, 59 Ks, and a whopping 26 homers allowed in 144 innings pitched. So the Dodgers, looking forward to facing him today. Their lineup will be uh, batting first, Wills at shortstop, third baseman Jim Gilliam at sec batting second, Willie Davis batting third and playing center. Tommy Davis batting left and playing, uh, batting cleanup. Ron Fairley batting fifth. Frank Howard batting sixth. Doug, uh, Cam I said Dolph. Doug Camilli batting seventh. Doug's got an interesting card for a very small time player. He has four home runs and 88 at bats, and you can see that two column, pretty deadly. A 523 slugging percentage in limited play for Camilli. Larry Burright playing second and batting eighth, and the pitcher Koufax batting ninth. Please ignore the sounds of animals in the background. They are of no consequence to our replay. Lubadet on the mound, he deals to the very fast Maury Wills. 2-9, that's a fly ball to center for the first out. Wills had 104 stolen bases in 7-8-3, or 80, excuse me, 62. I'm getting my replays confused. Ah! <laughs> Will's <clears throat> having trouble getting on base in the early going here, though. So Gilliam comes up to face Burdett. That is a 2-7. There's a base hit. 
Ilium uh, showing him how it's done. He's a B stealing. That's a 1 to 13. But Crandall's minus 3. And the hold makes it a minus 5 to that. Only a 1 to 8. I may have to break up the pets in a minute. But first, Willie Davis will come to the plate. Gilliam on first. A 3, a 7. That's a ground ball down to first. A 3, a 6, a 3. Double play. And Los Angeles is done in the first. So no score after one. And it'll be Adcott, Tommy Aaron, and Bell for the Braves. Here's Joe Adcock against Koufax, 4-9. That's a strikeout. Sandy's second K of the day. And he'll face Tommy Aaron with one out. How about a 6-2? That's a grounder back to Koufax. Over to Fairley for the second out. And here's Gus Bell coming up. 5-6 is another strikeout for Koufax. His third. And a 1-2-3 inning here in the second. Dodgers to bat. And they'll send Tommy Davis, Ron Fairley, and Frank Howard to the plate against Burdett, who pitches to Davis. 2-10. The ground ball down to third. Matthews picks it up, throws over to Adcock for the first out. One away. Here's Ron Fairley, the uh, slugging first baseman for the Dodgers. How about a 3-4? The ground ball to second base. Tommy Aaron over to pick it up. Slings it. Uh, yeah. Slings the ad Excuse me. That is not necessary. Come here. You don't need to bark at me. What's the matter? We're recording a video here. Yes, I know. Yes, we're having a very important game in the early season between the Braves and the Dodgers. Do you understand? <laughs> Oscar does not understand. He's like, I don't care, Father. I wish to have your attention. Well, in any case, Fairley's the second out. And that brings up Frank Howard. Lou Burdett to deal to Howard with two outs. That's a 5-9. Ground ball to shortstop. McMillan is a 2, and that's a 9 on the 2. That's going to be an error on McMillan. Frank Howard's going to reach on the E6. So Howard stands at first base, literally standing on the bag. Not a, not a fast runner. And that brings up that Doug Camilli card we talked about before. Limited play. It'd be a card you'd love to play full-time, but we are using 110% usage, folks, so he's going to get limited play. Fly ball to right field by Camilli. That's the third out. And no score after two. Despite Oscar's barking, we continue with Lee May, Burdett, and then McMillan back at the top of the order. Here's Lee May leading off against Koufax in the third, a 5-6. And he's got his fourth strikeout. Another beautiful pitch. Anytime you hit that five column, you're probably in trouble. If you're a batter. Here's Burdett. Two, six. That's a strikeout. So five Ks for Sandy now in uh, two plus innings. And he's back to the top of the order to face shortstop Roy McMillan, who's 0 for 1 on the day. How about a 6 7? That's a ground ball, second base X. Burr rate is a 2. We roll an 8. And that is a 4 to 3. Burr right over to Fairley to end the third. No runs, no hits, nobody left for Milwaukee. And we'll go to the bottom of the third, the Dodgers. Coming to bat with Burright, Koufax, and Wills. Here's Burright. Facing Lou Burdett. A 3-7. Single 1-5 to five or a line out for short. That's a line drive right at the shortstop. McMillan who snags it for the first out. One down. And here's Koufax coming to the plate. Sandy not a good hitting pitcher. A 5-2. He pops this one up on the infield. And Tommy Aaron settles under it. Pulls it in for the second out. That brings up, speeds to shortstop Wills, with two men down, a 3-5 is a ground ball, second base, A++, plus plus. the plus plus does not matter, so it's Aaron over two, first baseman Adcock to end the third. <clears throat> so no runs, no hits, and nobody left. After three, no score here in Los Angeles. <clears throat> the Braves will send up Crandall, Matthews, and Aaron in the fourth.
Through four, Koufax has struck out five, allowed just one base runner. Excuse me, through three, he struck out five and allowed just one base runner. Let's see how he does against Crandall. That's a 2-2 line drive uh, to second base. No problem there for Larry Burright. There's it for the first out. Eddie Matthews, 0-1, struck out his first time up against Sandy. Here's Sandy's pitch, 4-5. That's a home run 1-6 or a fly ball to right. The 5 indicates a home run. Look out, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Matthews. Takes a rare Koufax mistake over the wall for a solo home run. Gives the Braves a 1-0 lead. Matthews rounds the bases and high-five Sank Aaron as Aaron comes to the plate. <clears throat> so one out, Aaron up, Koufax delivers. A 3-8 three, three is a ground ball down to short. Wills picks it up over to Fairley for the second out. And that brings up the slugging first baseman, Adcock, who struck out his first time up. Joe ready for the pitch from Koufax. Here it is. A 3-10. Down on strikes. So Sandy gets through the inning, despite the home run for Matthews. He strikes out his sixth, and it's one nothing Milwaukee as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Gilliam, Davis, and Davis coming up for the Dodgers. Here's Jim Gilliam. One for one on the day. But a 3-10. This one's a ground ball down to Adcock at first. He'll take it himself for the first out. That brings up slugging center fielder Willie Davis. Grounded into a double play his first time up. How about a 1-6? There's a base hit for Willie Davis. So a 1-15. They'll be holding him minus 5. Gets him down to a 1-10. to So they won't be trying to steal with slugging left fielder Tommy Davis coming up. Luberdet would love to find a double play here, but a 4-8 indicates home run 1-11, to 11, double 12-20. to 20. It's going to be out and off the wall. Tommy Davis with a two-base hit. Willie Davis, a 1-17 to 17 to come around to score. He does. Ahead of the throw easily. An RBI double for Tommy Davis. Ties this ball game at one apiece. So Davis perched on second with just one out, and Ron Fairley is coming up. He'd like to hit this ball fairly and plate Davis. Redette deals a 2 a 7 ground ball third base B. Matthews snags it, looks Davis back to second, and throws over to Adcock for the second out. Brings up the big slugger, uh, Frank Howard, in right. He'll bat with two outs and Davis on second. Redette, the pitch, a 4 9, a fly ball to center field. No problem. Aaron roams over. Takes it for the final out. But the Dodgers get a run back, and after four complete, it's 1 1. Kofax back on the mound, six Ks through four. And Tommy Aaron will lead off. Have a 1 9, that's a strikeout. So Kofax is seventh on the day. Gus Bell struck out his first time up, a 6-2. Chopper back to Sandy, over to Fairley at first for the second out. So two quick outs, and here's Lee May, who struck out his first time up, 0-for-1 is Lee. He'll face Koufax, a 1-7. That's a single chance, single 1-6, to six, or a line out to first. It's a base hit. Just past the glove, Lee May is on. He's a B. That's a 1-13, and Burdett coming up. Looks like they're going to let Burdett hit. They want to get through the pitcher here to get back to the top of the order with two outs. So Burdett trying to get lucky. A 6-8. He puts the ball in play. A grounder to short. Wills is a 2. How about a 6? And that's going to be Wills to Fairley for the final out of the fifth inning. So no runs, one hit, one man left. <clears throat> and through uh, four and a half. It's all tied at one, and Camilli, Burright, and Koufax do up against Burdett. Here's Doug Camilli, 0 for 1 on the day so far, a 110. We'll make him 0 for 2. He grounds out to McMillan, who slings it over to Adcock to retire Camilli for the first out. Second baseman Larry Burright popped out his first time up. Burdett's pitch is a 510. That's a grounder to McMillan at short, an 11. Uh, two is a 6-3, to three. McMillan over to Adcock for the second quick out here in the fifth. 
Two good pitching performances thus far. Here's Koufax. Doesn't do much at the plate usually. This time he puts it in play to left. Out toward Gus Bell, who's a three. The nine on a three. That's out of Bell's reach, and Sandy's going to move into second with a stand-up two-out double. Sandy Koufax trying to help himself here. Puts himself in scoring position for Maury Wills. Wills over two so far on the day. Burdett with the pitch, a 5-6. Fly ball to right field, it looks like. Wills is going to be 0 for 3. And he is as May roams over and makes the catch. So five innings in the books. It's all tied at one, folks. Kofax comes out to face Roy McMillan. McMillan, two ground outs on the day, 0 for 2. He looks confident. There's going to be a catcher's card, X-16 on Camille's 4. It'll be a wild pitch, which doesn't matter with nobody on, followed by a foul out. So a foul out to Camille by McMillan, and he's 0 for 3. The first out of the 6th inning. Here's Del Crandall. 1 for 2 on the day is Del. What a 2-9. He finds uh, the ground out to short amid his good column. Wills over to Fairley. That's the second out. And Matthews, with two quick outs, will face... Oh, excuse me, Koufax with two quick, out, two quick outs will face Eddie Matthews, who's responsible for the Braves' lone run, a solo home run back in the fourth inning. Matthews one for two on the day. True outcomes today for Eddie Matthews. Strikeout and a homer. Koufax delivers a 4-4. Four, four, and that is the eighth strikeout of the day for Koufax. A 1-2-3 sixth. And the Dodgers to bat. The two, three, four hitters, Gilliam, Davis, and Davis do up. Here's Gilliam, one for two on the day against Burdett. A six, eight is a base hit to lead off the inning. And this is Burdett's POW inning, folks. So he's a B. They will hold him on. And Willie Davis coming to the plate. Burdett deals a four, five. He lofts a fly ball out to center field. No problem out there for Hank Aaron. And there's one away. Gilliam returns to first, and Tommy Davis will now bat. Burdett pitches to Davis, 1-4, and Tommy Davis gets a hold of this one, folks. It is back to deep right center field. A home run. Two runs will score. As Davis gets a hold of Burdett here and drives one over the wall for a two-run home run. The Dodgers now lead 3-1. And that's not a place you want to be in if you're Milwaukee with Sandy Koufax on the mound. <clears throat> so Burdett, one hit away from being tired. He'll deal to Ron Fairley, who's grounded out twice today. How about a 4-5? Another fly ball out to center. Hank Aaron roams over. He'll take it for the second out. And that'll bring up Frank Howard, who's 0-for-1, reached on an error back in the second. Burdett with the pitch, a 6-5. That's a ground ball to second base. Tommy Aaron over, picks it up, throws it over to Adcock to end the inning. But the damage is done. Two runs in. <clears throat> on the Tommy Davis home run. Davis has knocked in all three Los Angeles runs on the day. And now Milwaukee will send up the heart of their order against Koufax in the seventh. It'll be Aaron Adcock and Tommy Aaron. <clears throat> you never want to face two Aarons in one inning. It's an old adage, isn't it? Well, Tommy's a pretty good hitter, but let's see if Sandy can get through Hank. Hank, 0 for 2 on the day, is grounded out to short twice. Koufax with the pitch, a 3-11. And he's going to induce a third ground ball to Maury Wills from Hank Aaron for the first out of the inning. That brings up Adcock. He struck out twice, has yet to even lay bat on ball. Koufax with the pitch, a 6-3. Fly ball to left field. He's done better this time. Out to Davis. Who's a three outfielder, very average, in left field. Davis can't get there, and that's going to fall in for a base hit for Adcock. So Adcock on first. The tying run now at the plate in the form of Tommy Aaron. Adcock, no threat to steal. The pitch to Aaron, a 4-2 fly ball to right. Howard roams over and makes the catch for the second out, and that'll bring up Gus Bell. Bell over 2 on the day, Vince Koufax. And it's going to be a 2-4. Four. 
Uh oh. Home run one to two, double three to twenty. Well, it's gonna be a two bagger. For Gus Bell. Hancock normally a one to eight. He'd be a one to ten to try to score. That's a fifty percent chance. At the bottom of the order coming up, they're gonna send him. He is out. He is gunned down at home. A nine two to end the inning. So they took a big chance there. Had to try to get something going. Didn't want to leave it in Lee May's hands with two down and two on. And it remains three to one at Dodgers as they come to bat in the bottom of the seventh. They'll send Camille Burright and Koufax to hit against Burdett. <clears throat> Here's Camille, a 6 8. That's a base hit. His first base hit of the day and the, the year, I believe. And Camille on at first. No threat to steal with Burrite coming up. What a 3 a 4. There's a triple 1 to 18 or a double. That's a 3 bagger for Burrite. And the fourth base hit in two innings off of Burdett means he's going to be done. He's reached his point of weakness. And they will pull him, Milwaukee, with a trailing Los Angeles, I should say, by three runs, four to one, here in the seventh. Nobody out. Another run threatening to score from third. And let's see who they're going to go to. Like they're going to bring Jack Curtis in to pitch. They do a double switch here, they might. And yeah, we probably will. They're going to pull Gus Bell, actually. Gus Bell done for the day as. Uh, they're going to seek another left fielder. Mm, let's see what our options are here. We're bringing Lou Johnson to play left. Bat ninth. So the old double switch here. Curtis comes in to bat in the seventh hole. He's a POW three. And a hitting four. We'll grab that pitcher's hitting card, put him in place on the lineup. Put Johnson in the nine spot, so he'll bat second in the upcoming inning. And Curtis will have to deal with Koufax with Burr right on third. They'll pull the infield in. Koufax does not sacrifice. It's a 5-9. Oh my goodness, folks. Sandy Koufax finding the basic results on the pitcher's cards today. A home run, 1-16. to Sandy Koufax with a two-run home run. The beauty of Strat Basic, ladies and gentlemen, is anybody can go yard. And Sandy Koufax is now 2-3 for three on the day with a double and a two-run home run to help himself. And the Dodgers to a 6-1 to one lead. With nobody out. Still here in the seventh. Curtis will face Wills. Wills 0 for 3 on the day. 6 7 is a ground ball to second. <clears throat> Tommy Aaron's a 4. 2 on a 4 is going to be a base hit. So Maury Wills finally gets on base. He's a triple A stealer. That means holds don't matter, but catcher's arms do. So he's a 1 to 14. Steal against Crandall. He's going to give it a try. He's caught stealing. Unlucky roll there for Wills. And that is the first out of the inning. Jack Curtis breathes a sigh of relief. As he doesn't have to deal with Wills dancing around behind him in scoring position. He'll deal to Gilliam. 1-11. The ground ball to second. Would have been a double play ball. Wills was still on first. But it'll be the second out all the same. As Aaron picks it up and flings it over to Adcock. So Willie Davis comes to bat, one for three on the day with a run scored. Curtis deals to him, a three is seven as a ground ball down to first. Adcock scoops it up, flips to Curtis for the final out. 
of the seventh. But the Dodgers had three big runs. Capped off by a home run by Sandy Koufax off the pitcher's card. And it is now 6-1 to one Los Angeles as we head to the eighth. They'll send up May, Lou Johnson, and Roy McMillan. Koufax to deal to Lee May, who's 1-for-2 on the day. A base hit his last time up, a 2-9. And that's a strikeout. Koufax is 8th or ninth of the day. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ninth strikeout of the day for Koufax. He faces Lou Johnson, batting for the first time today. Came in as part of the double switch in the last inning. It's a ground ball to shortstop. Will's a pretty good fielding shortstop. 17 on the 2 is a 6-3. to three. Will's over to Fairley for the second out here in the 8th inning. There's Roy McMillan. Two down. McMillan trying to get something going from Milwaukee. He's going to ground this one down toward Wills. Who scoops it up again? No problem. Fires it to Fairley for the third out here in the eighth. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. Los Angeles with a five-run lead. And Davis, Fairley, and Howard will try to add to it against Jack Curtis. Here's the pitch to Tommy Davis. A 3-3. That's a grounder to second. Tommy Aaron over to Adcock for the first out. And Ron Fairley comes up over 3 on the day with a 3 11. There's a base hit for Fairley right up the middle. Kept his hands back, waited on that curveball, and just lined it straight up the middle is Fairley. The big Frank Howard comes to the plate over 3 today. Here's a 3 9, and he's down on strikes. For the second out, here in the bottom of the eighth for Los Angeles. Doug Camilli, one for four, started the rally back in the seventh. Here we are in the eighth. He's batting a second time in two innings. One for three with a run scored is Camilli and Curtis with the pitch, a 2-8. Well, I said Camilli had a scary card, and he has just gone yard. Big time against Curtis. A two-run home run. That puts this one all but out of reach for the Braves. It's now 8-1. to one. Los Angeles, Larry Burrett coming up with two outs, and Curtis just shaking his head. What are you going to do? Sometimes you're the windshield, and sometimes you're the bug. A 6-6 six -six to Curtis to Burrite is going to be a fly ball to left field. That'll be the final out of the inning as Gus Bell, sorry, Lou Johnson, in relief, squeezes it. But two more big runs for Los Angeles. They've scored eight runs in the last three innings now. <clears throat> And Koufax comes out on the ninth with a seven-run lead. He'll face Crandall's Matthews and Aaron. If you wanted to get a rally going, this is where it would be for the Braves. Koufax strikes out nine on the day so far, and he'll face Crandall, who's one for three. How about a four-nine? Sandy's in double-digit strikeouts. That's his tenth as Crandall sits down. Here's Matthews. Done the only damage against Koufax today, a home run way back in the fourth. He struck out his other two times up. Sandy with the pitch, a 5-9. That's a strikeout number 11 for Sandy Koufax on the day. <clears throat> and it all comes down to Koufax against Hank Aaron. The final out for the Braves uh, is at stake. Aaron has grounded out to short all three times he's been up. Koufax, a 6-5, finds the strikeout, strikes out the side here in the ninth against three very tough batters. That is a 0 an X, and that means uh, Milwaukee scores one, while the Dodgers score three, five, seven, eight. A final score of eight to one, Sandy Koufax with the complete game, uh, 13 strikeout victory. And uh, I believe he'll be our player of the game. Tommy Davis put in a good performance as well. He went two for four with a double a homer and three RBIs, but Sandy Koufax also went two for three with a two-run homer of his own to help himself. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Lou Burdett suffers the loss for Milwaukee. Los Angeles moves to 3-1 and one on the year. The Braves fall to 500 at 2-2. Two and two. And that is game number 31 in our 1962 replay. I hope you've enjoyed this game and will tune in to future games. This is Joe for Strat Baseball History reminding you to subscribe if you like the content and drop us a thumbs up. It really helps. Till next time.
Always remember, it's always a good day for baseball. Bye-bye.